Let's look at encryption support with cloud native storage. We'll first have a look at our vCenter server and I want to show you the key management server. We're using a high trust key management server and it's already established trust with vCenter server and vice versa. So we can now at least do the encryption if we so wish. The next thing to do is have a look at our policies. Of course, you can create many sorts of policies, but in this particular policy, what we want to do is VM level encryption with vSAN. So that means any VMDK or persistent volume created on the vSAN data store will be encrypted. Now there is one other requirement, and that requirement is, is to have an encrypted node. So you don't need to encrypt all of the nodes in your Kubernetes cluster, but you do need at least one node that is encrypted. And I have encrypted Kubernetes Worker 04 in this case, and I've also labeled it with encrypt true. And so that allows us to identify that that is the encrypted node. And this will be important later because when we decide to create a pod, we want it to be deployed on that node. We're just having a look at the storage class and persistent volume claim here. Nothing really out of the ordinary, except for the fact that the storage policy name refers back to the policy that we had defined previously. So I've now just created my storage class and my persistent volume claim. Let's now check that they're available. There is my encrypted vSAN storage class. And if we check for the persistent volume claim, there it is. You can see it's about one gig in size, which is what we requested. And the persistent volume now exists as well. Let's now go back to our vCenter server, the vSphere client. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to see that persistent volume bubbled up in cloud native storage or CNS. There's the container volume view and we will select all the columns. And here we can see the persistent volume with the vSAN encrypt policy. This is more details that CNS can offer you. Uh, you can see the persistent volume and the namespace, but there's no pod associated with it yet. And there we can see some additional information about the persistent volume. Now, if we look at the capacity view, the capacity view is quite interesting because it will tell you about persistent volumes, but it will tell you whether they're attached to pods or whether they're actually orphaned or not attached to any pods. So at the moment, we have a persistent volume, but we also have another persistent volume that is not attached to any pod or not attached to any VM in this case. And by that, it means a Kubernetes worker node. So it hasn't been attached to a Kubernetes worker node. So let's address that. Let's go ahead and deploy out a new pod. And that pod is going to use the persistent volume that we created previously. And you can see the claim name is the persistent volume claim. And here we are with node selector once again, and this is going to ensure that this persistent volume is going to be attached to the encrypted Kubernetes worker. Otherwise, it would not attach to any other Kubernetes worker because it's not encrypted. So now when we create that pod, the pod will be scheduled on the encrypted Kubernetes worker, and thus the persistent volume that is also encrypted will be attached to that Kubernetes worker and then will be mounted into the pod. So there you can see that we have definitely placed a pod on the encrypted Kubernetes worker. And so now if we go back to the vSphere UI and we'll just refresh the capacity screen, we no longer have any orphaned volumes as you can see there, but now the number of block container volumes that are attached to a VM has increased. And we can just verify uh, one more thing, and that's to see that the volume is mounted to the pod. And we can see there that it is indeed, and that completes the demonstration.